Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. I wanted to do a video today talking about my thoughts on Gen Z and the cost of living crisis. I wanted to talk about this on my channel because I feel like we have a pretty good uh, variety of folks here um, who listen in. We've got people from the baby boomer generation, Gen X, millennials, Gen Z. I feel like we've got a good variety of folks. So I'm really interested to hear from all of you guys and to get your thoughts on this. Um, I'm going to play a couple clips and give my commentary on it, but I did want to just mention a couple things right off the bat in my introduction here that I think everybody can agree on and that maybe will get you to look at things in a different way. Number one, I think we can all agree that the economy is terrible right now, uh, that we're obviously in a depression, if not a recession, and um, it's very bad. The cost of living is insane. Inflation is insane right now. I think everybody can agree. Um, and whether you look at the data and you look at the quote number, the numbers are lying. I mean, Joe Biden literally just said that <laughs> the other day that our economy is like the, uh, what did he say? It was like the envy of the world or something. They're ridiculous. They claim that we have a strong economy, strong jobs growth. This is not true at all. Many of these jobs numbers, like if you look at things, you can see, I mean, if you're just paying attention, you know that layoffs are happening everywhere across the board at all of these companies, especially tech companies. And so obviously, if people are being laid off, that's not a strong jobs market. But a lot of these jobs that are are being taken, it's not like, oh, people are working and then they can afford to live. No, many of these jobs are people are working two or three jobs. So the jobs numbers look good, but the actual economic situation is bleak. Um, so everybody can agree that things have, uh, in recent years, quadrupled in price. You don't have to look at the inflation numbers and percentage, right, to know that the gas has gone up, you know, three, fourfold, that your groceries have gone up tremendously, car insurance, etc. Everyone knows that. And at the same time, wages remain stagnant. Employers are refusing to pay a proper wage. And so the, the young generation can't afford basic necessities. And I would say it's not just them. Um, look at your purchasing power, like what you can buy today People can't buy, they can't afford to buy anything of substance. Um, and that is because the country is being hollowed out. Uh, for example, $100,000 used to be considered a good wage. That was considered, if you made six figures, you were considered, I don't want to say wealthy, but you were considered at least, at the very least, um, upper to upper middle class, right? Nowadays, $100,000 is like nothing. And that is because the value of a dollar has gone down so much. You can't buy anything with a dollar anymore. I mean, you can't even buy a dollar with a dollar <laughs> because uh, inflation is so bad. So you have to look at what you can get with your money nowadays and what your purchasing power is. Just think about the kinds of groceries you were able to get back in 2008, what you were able to buy for $50 versus what you can get today for that. It's, it's not difficult to put together to see that money is depreciating so badly and so quickly. And... Um, employers simply don't want to pay people. Not only do they not want to pay them, they don't want to offer them anything. Um, and they want you to do sometimes two or three jobs in one. So people are working harder than ever, actually, and they're getting nothing in return for that investment. You're investing, in many cases, eight hours a day, five days a week of your time into a company that sees you as simply a number and they don't care about you. They're not investing in you as a person um, because you're investing your time into the company. There's no mutual investment going on in many cases, I'll say. Um, and let's just, I'll give you an example that maybe you can easily relate to. I had a good friend growing up 
whose aunt uh, started working at GM when she was, um, I want to say, in her early 20s. In any case, you know, this woman was a baby boomer. She started working for GM General Motors, and I don't believe she had a college education, but I think that they ended up paying for her to... Uh, to advance her career skills. But in any case, she worked at the company for 40 or 50 years. And when she started, it, it was the kind of thing where the company invested in you. And not only did you get paid a decent wage, and back then you could support an entire family on like one income, they got health benefits, they had a pension, um, and all of this, right? They actually had a retirement and they could retire comfortably like she was able to. That is not the case anymore. Most of these uh, employers, they want to pay literally nothing. They want you to be happy with like $10 an hour and they're not giving you health benefits. You think you're getting a 401k? Yeah, right. Most Americans right now are living paycheck to paycheck. In fact, I think it's 70% of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. So your money doesn't buy anything anymore and most people are one emergency away from like going into serious debt in fact a lot of people right now are having to put gas and groceries on credit cards so americans credit card debt is greater than it's ever been our national debt is trillions of dollars 37 trillion dollars we're not going to be able to pay that back and they're sending money to other countries that most Americans cannot even point to on a map. And these kids were told, Gen Z and the millennials also, were told that by their parents, if they went to college and got an education, they would be able to get a good job and have the quote, American dream. Well, that's not true. For the baby boomer generation, the cost of higher education was a lot less than what it is today. Nowadays, higher education is incredibly expensive. All of these kids have to go into debt in order to get a degree. Then they get out of college and they can't get jobs. You know, there's people who have four-year bachelor's degrees, some people that have two degrees, right, that can't get jobs. They can't get hired or they're getting hired at entry-level positions making like $12, $15 an hour after having gone to school, taken on all this debt, and then they have this student loan debt to pay back in addition to everything else. And so a lot of the older generation will tell these people to, okay, then if you don't want to go into higher education and, and the kids are starting to figure out that that's a scam, they say, do vocations, do the trades. Well, I'm hearing, and I'm, I'm interested to hear from you guys as well, that that is not really a good option for people anymore, that even the trades are not um, hiring people like they used to. You're not making as much as you used to. They don't want to have to train people. Um, you know, there was somebody that was talking about the process they were going through just to try to be a welder, and it was ridiculous. Um, so wages are the lowest possible, and it's people are, are upset with that. They're upset with employers extracting as much labor as possible from people while giving them nothing in return. People are sick of working so hard and then knowing that they're never going to be able to afford to buy a home. They're never going to be able to afford to have a family. Even it, even when they make these lifestyle changes and cut back and all of this, the system itself is fundamentally broken. That is something that everyone, I think, needs to acknowledge and admit. Or you could say, actually, it's working exactly as it's designed to work. So, the system, you could say, is designed so that only a few are allowed to rise up from their caste, if you will, or their class. Now, people don't understand this. Like, the the media and popular culture likes to present America as if there's this American dream that everybody can attain if you just work hard and pull yourself up by the bootstraps and make sacrifices, that you can have these things, right? You can own a home, you can have a family, you can start a business. But in America, everything costs money. Uh, it takes money in order to make money. Most new businesses 
do not succeed. They fail. And then young people are being told to go into debt or they're, they're being fed the, these nonsense lies by influencers who are telling them things like hustle culture. You just need to hustle more. You just need to get another gig. The gig economy. What a joke that was. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. And so some folks are allowed to rise up from their class and succeed, but it's only a very few who are then looked at and held up as as this thing that, oh, yes, if you just work hard, you could succeed like them, you know, but when you actually look at how what the percentage is, right, how many people will actually succeed, it's very little. For example, I am somebody who comes from working class family. My father is a drywall finisher. My mother was a secretary and then a paralegal. And, um, you know, my parents divorced when I was two. So I was mostly raised by a single mother who then became a narcissistic alcoholic and threw me out when I was a teenager. You know, I started working when I was 14 years old. I started working at Wendy's and I hostessed at a seafood restaurant in South Florida. When my mother threw me out when I was 17, I had to drop out of high school. I had to sleep on couches and I asked the restaurant to let me go through server training. So I was allowed to become a waitress. I could work doubles. And doing that, I was actually able to make enough to kind of pull myself out of the hole that you are, that I was starting from, right? Having had to drop out of high school, I had to go get my GED. I, I had to have friends give me rides to the GED place because I didn't have a car when I was thrown out of the house. So I understand what it's like to be in this position of you're starting out with nothing. Sometimes you're negative. You're in a hole like my mom tried to steal my identity after she threw me out. So I didn't have I was starting out with like no credit and the way my credit history began was with my mother trying to steal my identity and apply for credit cards and even a mortgage in my name uh, in you know, things like this, taking out Comcast bills in my name, running them up and then not paying them. And so that's how I know what it's like to start out like negative and how difficult it is to try to dig yourself out of that while also paying to survive, right? While having to come up with rent and a phone bill and insurance or a car payment, blah, 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 blah. Like I have gone through these experiences. So I understand what this is like and how difficult it truly is. But even for my generation, like I said, at that age, I was able to make enough money as a waitress to, you know, eventually rent a room at somebody's house, or I had people who helped me and I got very, very lucky. Um, but nowadays, that's not the case. A lot of those service jobs are gone. A lot of the jobs that were available for people that didn't have a college uh, education or the jobs that didn't require this, a lot of that is gone. And now a lot of these young people, like I always was able to get into places if I had an in-person interview. I'm very good at talking to people. So when I was applying for jobs when I was 17 and I was literally homeless, um, I was able to just by talking to people sometimes get in. Um, I got lucky when I was 18, I think it was, I started working at a law firm as a receptionist and I was able to work my way up to a paralegal, right? Without having to go to school and get a quote degree. And then there were other firms that hired me as a paralegal without me having a paralegal certificate, a certification. Nowadays, this is not the case. Uh, AI is running through a lot of these um, resumes. So these young kids that are applying for jobs on Indeed, on LinkedIn, AI is going through and automatically screening them out if they don't meet certain qualifications, like having a four-year degree. When I was going through the job thing back in the day, like I said, if I could get an in-person interview, I may be able to sh just impress people by you know, my ability to talk and explain that I'm willing to work hard, I'm a fast learner, and maybe could make up for not having a four-year degree with having experience, which is where I was coming from as a paralegal who had experience but wasn't certified, didn't have a certification or a degree. 
And so sometimes if you can get into an interview and you can talk to people, you can convince them to give you a chance and then, you know, you can get in that way. Well, this isn't the case anymore, like I said, because a lot of these people are being screened out by AI. They don't even have the opportunity to like talk themselves into jobs that maybe they're like not totally qualified for like I did uh, back in the day. And so I think that's very difficult. On top of this, we have these systems now of discrimination. We have a social credit system. A lot of people don't believe this. But yes, insurance companies give people different quotes and different prices based on their quote social credit or whatever. They have different things they use for your credit score or ways that they determine this. But it's essentially in many cases like a, a social credit system now. And different people are getting different prices for things based on stuff like that. And, and a lot of these jobs too nowadays are, it, it, there's a lot of like, a lot of things depend on like you just happen to be in the right time at the right place at the right time or um it's like it revolves around who you know uh, I can't tell you how many times I saw that, especially at law firms, of people getting jobs just because of who they knew, because they knew somebody, somebody's friend's son needed a job. Like, that's literally how it works. And many of these people were not qualified, weren't even good at their jobs, but they were giving it to them anyways because of just who they knew. And that's tragic, but that is in many ways that is the case in, in many instances. Now, another thing that these young people are having to contend with as well is the internet, is social media. When I was a teenager, like I didn't have a cell phone until I was 17 years old and I could pay for the phone and pay for the bill each month. You know, we didn't just have like the internet, like it, social media wasn't a thing. And I can't imagine what it's like being a young person now and being exposed to the overconsumption trends on social media. This may seem like a tangent, but I just want to add it in here before I play some of these clips and give my commentary. Um, the influencers. I can't stand some of these influencers and the videos they do. You know, there, there are these influencers that do hauls from stores, right? So they'll order a bunch of stuff or in, in many cases, a lot of these influencers get things given to them so they'll make a video about it to encourage other people to buy this stuff. So this drives me crazy when you see these people doing these product hauls. It just promotes consumption, overconsumption to such a degree that it's just not necessary. You do not need to have all of these clothes, all of these different outfits, all of these different bathing suits. You need like one swimsuit. You don't need to have all of these things, but they make these videos you know, to, to essentially sell these products, but it's very, very disguised as them just saying, oh, you know, let's just go over this haul. I, I went shopping and bought these things and they're lying. They're not telling you that they're getting paid, you know, by these companies to promote these things. Or in some cases they do. And they put that little disclaimer that says paid promotion. And most people don't notice that. Um, a lot of these influencers do things like these get ready with me videos where they again have $60 hair mask and $50 face cream and they've got an eye cream and they have this whole uh, like routine, this whole th massive amounts of products. Some of these people have literally a refrigerator for their products that they keep in their bathroom. What are you, like, what are these folks doing? And I, so I can see the baby boomer generation. I can see what they mean when they think these people are like entitled and like just irresponsible with their money and are just blowing money on things that they don't need. Um, but again, there's nuance to this. A lot of these videos are fake or these people are given these products and they're not actually buying them and spending their money on them. But some of them are. A lot of these young people you know, you look at them and they're spending money to get their uh, eyebrows laminated, whatever that means. They're uh, spending money on eyelash extensions, on Dyson, $500 Dyson air wraps, on getting their nails done, like all these stupid things that they're, they blow money on. And it's like, what are you doing with that? Uh, you know, why are you doing this? And so I can see I can see both sides. And the other side uh, to that is, I can tell you, a lot of those people who are 
blowing money on things like this. It's called doom spending. A lot of those young folks feel hopeless about the future. They think, I'm never going to be able to own a house. I'll never be able to afford kids. So why bother? Why not blow money on a $60 face mask? Like you see, they're, they don't even think that there's a future. Or if there is one, they don't care. They're checked out. They're not saving. Well, in many cases, they can't afford to save. They're living paycheck to paycheck anyways. But for some of them, they're just living with their parents. They, The money that they are making, they're not saving because they feel like it's pointless anyways and that the money is worthless. So they blow it on things like that or on gambling or on alcohol, on narcotics, and they narcotize themselves. It's very sad. And then they blame a lot of the times they don't understand what is the real cause of this. Like the older generation blames the younger generation or the younger generation blames the older one for squandering, you know, wealth that was handed to them or hoarding it, right? Which the baby boomers are doing. They have over half of the wealth. Um, the real problem, though, is the central banks that collude and the politicians and the corporations who allow it. And so now that was a long introduction, long commentary. I'm going to go and play a couple clips here now and give my thoughts on that. Um, I don't want to make this video too long, but I did want to give my thoughts on this because I think it's super important and I think it's a major issue and it's going to be one even more moving forward as things get worse. Has anyone noticed that it's literally becoming impossible to live a normal life because of the inflation that's going on? Yeah, inflation is very, very bad. And unfortunately, like I said, many people misdiagnose the problem and they think, oh, it's this group, it's that group, and they're not understanding the mechanisms in place and who is really to blame. And most of that, I will say, is the central banks. And these central banks do collude and their major thing that they, that they have that they make money on is debt. It's debt. Literally, our rent payment used to be $800. Two bedroom, two full bath. $1,400. $1,400. And so the, he's saying that his rent has increased this much in just a very short amount of time. Now, I don't know if this guy technically is Gen Z or if he's technically a millennial, but the point that I'm making is these, these folks are living through something that the older generation while cost of living did increase, I don't believe they went through something this bad like this. $1,400 is what we pay now. Used to be 800 just a few years ago, and now it's 1400 So it has almost doubled in just a few years, the cost of rent. Now, um, typically they say your rent should be um, one week's pay, right? that that should give you enough to, to be comfortable. Your rent should be one week's pay. While most people nowadays are paying 60% of their income goes to rent alone. That That's not sustainable. It's just not. Go figure. My auto insurance, gone up 28%. Again, go figure. Inflation. Yep. Don't let me forget to mention electric bill, $300. For what? <laughs> For what? Yeah, that's another thing. A lot of these companies are taking um, the opportunity to exploit the economic situation with price gouging. Sometimes whole industries collude with each other to artificially maintain high prices across an entire industry. And I know it sounds counterintuitive. People think that we have a free market, which just is hilarious to me and a joke. We don't have real competition. Go look at multinational corporations who own other corporations who own other corporate the consolidation of corporations we actually don't have a variety we don't really have a free market we have very little options to choose from and these massive brands that own smaller brands and smaller brands and you it gives the illusion of there being choice when really it's like six mega corporations control all of this that is crazy to me and it's crazy to me that most people are unaware of it. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. Now the icing on the cake, I feel like I go to the grocery store. Okay, I go to Kroger. I feel like I go in there with $100 and I come out with a gallon of milk. Yeah. And two pieces of toast. And not even the good pieces of toast. You know, like the end pieces. 
that's what I come out with. It is dumb what is going on. How has how has inflation? Yeah, and so they also try to gaslight you too, and they try to make it, they gaslight about how, quote, great the economy is right now, and they lie about the true numbers of inflation, but everybody knows inflation is not at 9 or 10%. Just go to a grocery store and see how much prices have increased in just the past few years. That's not the past decade or so, that just the few uh, years. It's nuts. The cost of living in Canada is sick. Okay, so I will um, add a caveat here. Obviously, I'm American. I'm not Canadian. Uh, I don't want to speak for Canadians, but this young woman is from Canada, and she says that it, it, they're barely surviving. And I believe that this is true uh, for the West in general. I don't think this is limited to just being a crisis in America of living in Canada is sick. There is no more cost of living. There is only cost of surviving. My girlfriend and I met for coffees the other day and she owes a little bit of money to the government and she was crying to me. Crying, saying, I don't know what to do. I'm working three jobs. I'm a single mother. Like, I can't afford to live here anymore. So she had a call with the CRA and the CRA ripped her apart. So imagine that, right? Imagine you're somebody who has children, you're working three jobs, and that still isn't enough to survive, to get by. You said, it is unacceptable it's crazy. that you have not maxed out your credit cards to pay us. It is not acceptable that you are paying $1,000 a month in groceries for yourself and your three children. You need to cut back. So she said to them, you're telling me that you want me to take the food from my children's mouth to pay your greedy ass. When yes, that's literally what they expect. And it's your fault that fucking grocery... Okay, she's going to start cursing now, but... It I agree with what she's saying, though. Like, yes, it is condescending to hear that uh, p when people say that, oh, you just need to cut back, right? A lot of the baby boomer generation says that to the, the younger generations, to the millennials and Gen Z, who they, I think in many cases, wrongfully assume are just lazy and entitled and don't want to work and expect everything to be handed to them and aren't appreciative uh, of other people's struggles. I don't think it's that at all. When you listen to these videos, none of these people seem to be living beyond their means. It's not like they're uh, spending their money on things that they don't need. Like we're talking about people who are saying they can barely afford to pay their basic necessities. This is not people who just need to cut back on the Starbucks and Netflix and then everything will magically be okay. We're talking about people who are thousands of dollars in debt, who cannot afford to pay their rent, who are living off of credit cards, who are living paycheck to paycheck, who are one medical emergency away from being homeless. That is insane. I told myself I would never cry on the- That is where we're at. Like, listen to this young lady. Just listen to her. I don't think that she is even spending money on Netflix or Starbucks. Internet, because I think that's so lame. But I just got our rent renewal thing for our apartment complex. And it's going up by $300 a month. $300 for a one bedroom apartment that is not updated in any sort of way. And our complex doesn't even have like nice amenities. Like we have a tiny pool and a tennis court. Like this is not a luxury apartment complex. We already pay with all the fees and everything included $2,000 a month. And that is insane. $2,000 a month for a crappy old one bedroom apartment that has old utilities uh, and a tennis court. Like you're not these. Okay, I'll just give you an example, right? I'm 35. I'm going to be 36 in uh, just a few months here. So um, when I was growing up in South Florida, right in the 2007 2008 timeframe, and this is when we were going through, mind you, uh, a massive economic recession. We were able to, back then, you could get a two-bedroom apartment in Boynton Beach for $8.50 a month or $9.50 a month. 
And yes, you know, this is, these are starter, apart basically they're starter apartments. You're not really getting fancy things. You're lucky if you have a stackable washer and dryer included. And in many cases, you're paying extra for that and you're renting those. So you're paying an, an additional fee each month. In many cases, you're paying a pet deposits and all this other crap. So you are putting this money in, but you're not really getting anything out of that investment, right? But like I'm saying back then, at least, you know, two people could afford a two bedroom apartment for $9.50 a month, because that that's not that much of your wage. That, that actually does split between two people come out to about one week's pay, or at least it did for me back then. I also, um, at one point, was able to get onto a wait list for affordable housing. There was a really small, um, uh, affordable housing place that was really close to the law firm I worked at. It what is sort of walking distance, um, and it was in like the city place area. There was a two or three year waiting list to get into these places. That's how long I had to wait to get in. But I was able to get a two bedroom apartment there uh, for six fifty a month. So split between two people, that was like three hundred dollars a month for rent that was affordable and doable for somebody my age at that time, which is, I was like 18 or 19 or something. I was young and that was something I could afford. We are talking about something very different now where those same apartments that are kind of crappy and whatever, with not a lot of like amenities and older, they're older places, now you're paying two or three thousand dollars a month for that for literally like a walk-in closet size one bedroom apartment that's insane now we're going to be paying twenty three hundred dollars a month for this tiny apartment and that's just so frustrating i don't understand how people can live in this world anymore and i just don't want to move again because that's so much work and more money and it's stressful trying to find another place and it's just so annoying and now i feel like i need to get a new job and so here like what is she supposed to do if she's gonna move because she if she can't afford to pay an additional 300 dollars a month rent that is a major increase price increase okay to expect people to be able to pay each month an additional 300 dollars um that's nuts if she can't afford that though and she has to go to another place you have to come up with first, last, and security. Uh, in many place, uh, places, in many cases, you have to put down a pet deposit if you have pets. You have to pay for movers. You have to pay to rent a U-Haul or whatever. You're, and it actually, by the time she goes through all that, it might even out to be the same additional $300 a month she would pay if she stayed. So you're, what options does she have here? She basically is going to end up paying more money one way or the other, and I feel like that's wrong. Now, on the flip side of that, and she's getting nothing for this because she's renting, she puts all this investment into this and she will have nothing. And also, they can just decide at any time to not renew her lease. And then she's in a situation of once again, having to look for a new place to go. Now on the flip side, if she was a homeowner, now you have to worry about, not only do you have to, are mortgages way more expensive than they used to be, houses are way more expensive than they used to be. Look at the median income that you need now in America to afford a single family home. It is way more than it was for the baby boomer generation, for sure. In addition to that, now there's property taxes, there's HOA fees, there's if anything goes wrong, you have to fix it. So there's all of these different things. So regardless of whether she was a homeowner or renting, I believe she would still be in very similar shoes. She'd probably be in the same boat of having these problems. And I just got this job and I like it, but it's not paying me nearly what I need. And so now I'm gonna have to go through applying to jobs again, which I did for like a whole year plus until I found this job. So I'm gonna have to go through all that again. And that just seems so sad. And again, it doesn't seem like this is somebody that's just entitled and lazy and doesn't want to work. She's saying she likes her job. They just don't pay a living wage. They're not paying enough for people to afford to live. The millennials and Gen Zers who are complaining that they can't buy a house are not working for minimum wage. 
Okay, so now I wanted to share this gentleman's video because I think he does a very good explanation here of just showing what things were like in the 80s versus what they are like now. These are people making 60, 70, 80, 90 thousand dollars a year who can no longer afford a house. Okay, so I thought that was interesting. He has a little thing here of boomers saying, oh, stop whining minimum wage was three dollars and ten cents when we were your age or whatever the nonsense that they come up with and he is saying we're talking about people who aren't even making people who are making in some cases three times the federal minimum wage cannot afford to live they cannot afford basic necessities but minimum wage workers are also complaining because they can't afford rent if you look back to 1980 the rent was 243 dollars minimum wage was three dollars and ten cents meaning your monthly gross was 496 dollars so to rent this apartment it would be 48.9 percent of your gross income okay so he's saying back then you could afford to rent the same place and your your uh, rent is only less than half of your income it's about almost half back in 1980 but let's fast forward to 2024 the average rent is 1747 the federal minimum wage is seven dollars and 25 cents giving you 1160. you can't even get an apartment with the federal minimum wage but let's be generous and double the federal minimum wage because yeah yeah so even doubling it people at walmart and fast food joints are making 1450 to 15 dollars so 1450 would bring you to 2320 so technically you're making more, but this is your gross and it'd be 75% of your gross income making double the federal minimum wage in 2024. But let's take it even a step further. ZipRecruiter said that the starting pay for college graduates is $24 an hour. That's like, no I can tell you right now, that's like nothing. And this is the issue that a lot of these young people are facing, these Gen Z folks. They're getting offered stuff like that, but $24 in nowadays is, not enough. It's not a living wage. And they are saying no. So that would be $38.40 a month. So a, a, someone with a bachelor's degree could afford this one bedroom apartment, but it would be 45.4% of their gross income. So why would you go to college for four years to get a bachelor's degree and go into debt to come out and all you can afford is a one bedroom apartment that is 45% of your income. And then you're paying student loans and then you're paying more for health insurance because you're probably not getting it at your job and you're paying more for a car and insurance and gas. I mean, this is just not sustainable. A college graduate is spending the same amount of their income on rent as the minimum wage worker in 1980 did. Roughly the same. In the there you go. That right there. That should tell you everything. That it isn't that these people are just entitled and need to cut back on the Netflix. That's not the case. Minimum wage worker in 1980 put on a hat, learned skills for two weeks, and started their job. A bachelor's degree spent four, five, six years of their life in school and fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars and now have to spend the same amount of money on rent as a minimum wage worker did in 1980. Yeah, that right there is the issue, I think. Bro, tell me why it's so expensive. Okay, and so um, this woman, same thing. She goes over how she, when she was applying for jobs, people were saying, oh, you know, how come you worked at these four different jobs? Like, they think she went from one job to the next, to the next, to the next. And they're kind of wondering, well, why couldn't you stay at one place? And what she explained was, no, I had all of those jobs at the same time. I was working all four jobs at once. That is insane. And still not making enough to survive. If you're working four jobs and you still can't survive, what more are you supposed to do? What more are you supposed to cut back? Like, you only have X amount of hours in a day. How many jobs are you supposed to work in a day then to get by? This is my question to the baby boomers who would suggest that people just need to, you know, pull themselves up by the bootstraps. How many hours a day should these young people be forced to work to barely be able to afford to go to a dentist? Seriously. I don't want to work anymore. Now, I like this lady's video because she starts off saying this, right? Which is, again, the assumption that everybody has about these folks. And now everyone who's not going to watch the full video can go comment about how lazy I am, how lazy my generation is, and how 
we just don't want to work anymore. And now for those that are still here, I will explain what we mean by that. I do want to work. If I didn't work, I think I would honestly probably get so bored that I would just want to off myself. Like, this is important because, again, I feel like a lot of these people do want to work. They want to work, but it's just not worth it for them. And that not only can they not survive, but like they're competing now with people who are being imported in from other countries and are being given benefits and who will work for pennies. And so what are they supposed to do? The jobs, rather than meeting their demands and saying, you know what, you're right, we do need to start paying people a living wage, they go, ha ha, we'll hire an illegal who will work for pennies on the dollar and what are you going to do about it? Most of us want to work. It helps give you purpose. It helps give you something to do. Hopefully you do something you're passionate about. Luckily for me, I do do something I'm passionate about. So I genuinely like my job. But the problem is the purpose of a job is supposed to pay for you to be able to afford to live. And that's just not the case anymore. People in my generation who went to college, who did everything they were supposed to do, worked hard in school, went to a good college, graduated with their degree, yada yada, got their first job, and they can't afford to live. And yeah, this is the complaint a lot of them have. A lot of these young people too, if they do want to be able to afford to live, their quality of life and their quality of living is tremendously decreased. For example, many of these young folks, if they want to live in a decent home or buy a home, they now have to have their parents sign for a down payment because they can't get it on their own, or they have to live with multiple people, right? Like they have to rent out other rooms in an apartment because they literally can't afford to pay the rent of a three bedroom apartment or they can't afford to pay the mortgage on a three bedroom home. So their lifestyles are different, right? They can't afford to have a three bedroom house for uh, uh, to raise children in if they are forced to rent out two of those rooms because that everything is so expensive. Now you've got three people crammed together in one house. And again, it's like, what are, where is this going? They feel like, what's the purpose of living like this? Why do I want to live like this? To live horribly just to be able to get by and pay for basic necessities and not to be able to enjoy my life in any real way where all my time is spent at jobs making money for other people, money I'll never be able to see, and again, for what? What do I get and out of it? we're working 40 to 60 hours a week, like on average, and we cannot afford to live. Like we just do not make enough to pay rent, to pay for food. Everything is so expensive right now and wages are not keeping up with the cost of living. So we are working full time, giving up a huge portion of our lives to work and we can't even afford to live. That is why my generation is frustrated. That is why we don't wanna work anymore because we work really hard and we still can't afford to even get by. So like, what's the point? And then the older generation gaslights them and says, you just need to work harder. You just need to cut out the Starbucks. As if cutting out a couple dollars, you know, $5 coffee two or three times a week is really going to, you know, substantially change their financial outlook in life. It's simply not. We can't afford to save. We can't afford to buy things we want. We can't. But it isn't just them. This is the thing that I would like to suggest to the younger generation. It's not just you guys who can't afford anything. It is everybody right now, everybody. Most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and most of them are heavily in debt and relying on credit cards just to put gas in their car and food on the table. Afford to go out and do fun things. We can barely afford to pay our rent and buy food. A lot of us have like two or three jobs or like work a full-time job and have several side hustles. That is the case for me. And then older generations just look at us and they're like, you're not working hard enough. This is your fault. Like you're not working hard enough. That's why you can't get the reason. Yeah, so somebody who works three jobs and then has side hustles, oh, they need to work harder 
Like, it just sounds so ridiculous. The reason we can't get by is because the cost of living since the 90s has gone up 67%, while the wages have only gone up 18%. So wages have not kept up with the cost of living. That is why we can't afford to live. Not because we're lazy, not because we don't work, not because we don't want to work anymore. That is why. That is all. We're also in extreme debt because everything is so much more expensive than it used to be. College is way more expensive than it used to be. 100%. Cars are way more expensive than they used to be. Housing, way more expensive than it used to be. And on top of all that, politicians and older generations are destroying our environment, not doing any- Okay, I understand this generation is very anxious about everything, including the environment. And I don't like microplastics and a lot of the things that I think have polluted and contaminated the environment, but I'm not as doomer as these people because this is God's creation. And I believe that a lot of these things can be very easily turned around. I think the earth is far more resilient than they understand. Job on the but I get why they're nervous all the time. Now, this guy, he curses too. So um, on the weekends because her corporate nine to five is not covering her. You know what's even scarier oh, oh, about I'm sorry. It's, that's not this clip. It's the next one. But the, yeah, <laughs> this is another issue. These so-called good jobs are not paying people enough. And so they have to wait tables in addition to that, or they have to bartend at night. Imagine this is your life. You go to work every day at, the, at a corporate job in an office. And then after that, instead of getting to go home and relax, you have to go wait tables then. Interesting job on the weekends because her corporate nine to five is not covering her. You know what's even scarier about this is that when we talk about how unfair it is that most of us have to work two jobs in order to afford the basic life necessities, we're really only thinking about right now. I know we always joke this about is how a really good is point. really fast, but I wonder what the long-term effects of this are going to be physically, psychologically, emotionally. Because in the past, you could have one person working a 40 hour a week job and you could live a comfortable life. So she is concerned about the long-term effects of this because obviously it's not going to get better immediately. So what are going to be the effects of these people who are working, who are burning themselves out, working three jobs? And uh, it, this is literally like how they're starting out in life. What are they, what is it going to be like for them in another 20 years after, of doing that? I'm not saying that that life couldn't come with its own unique challenges, but imagine working six to seven days a week for the rest of our working lives and they keep moving their retirement age. Oftentimes when we study people who are burned out or over- Well, there's not gonna, I think it's cute that she thinks there's gonna be one. There, there, none of these, you think that there's gonna be any retirement for anybody in the future? You think that you're gonna get any like social security benefits? No, we are gonna be paying into things that we're never gonna get. And everybody knows that, that's another issue. But I thought I'd tell you some um, of the things that I've folks, had to give up. With the younger generation and again, why they're kind of like dropping out of the society because they don't feel like it's ever going to be worth it for them. Because of the cost of living increases. So I decided to make my own list of- Okay, so this I thought was very interesting. This woman here is- a military mom right so she's married to somebody who's in the military right now and just listen to how bad things are for her financially the things that me and my family have had to give up because of the cost of living increasing so here's my list the number one thing on it is all of our subscriptions really we didn't really have that much in the first place but we had hulu disney plus and amazon prime Okay, so they were not spending tons of money on like these subscription services. They had three they were paying for. That was probably maybe uh, came out to 40 or $50 a month and they had to cancel all of those. And if I'm being honest, Amazon Prime doesn't even deliver like when they say they're going to. That's that true. one to two day shipping is a joke. Anywho, totally. yeah, so we canceled all those subscriptions and instead with our Roku TV, we got those like free TV apps like Freevee and Plex. So now we don't have to pay for TV anymore. Next thing we gave up was actually my once a month target trips. Now, anybody who is a stay at home parent knows that you literally get no time to yourself. Yeah, I can attest to this. Not even when you're trying to take shit. I can attest to that. I used to go to Target once a month and you can't even go to the bathroom by yourself without somebody coming in there to talk to you and ask you questions. I would set aside like 25 bucks for myself just to get a coffee, get myself some face masks, maybe a t-shirt. Now we can't afford that anymore, so no more Target trips.
the next thing that we could have and that's i totally understand what she's saying you know it's very difficult especially if you are uh, a stay-at-home parent and your whole day is literally your whole life is taking care of everybody else and cleaning up after everybody else like to not be able to have one day a month where you can do just one nice thing for yourself or like treat yourself to something it really does suck because again it makes it feel like there's no joy in life. That's, it sucks. Out was actually eating out at a sit down restaurant. I'm the type of person who always tips, especially I try to do like 20% at least because I used to be a server and I know that they don't make that much money. But honestly, we just cannot afford to eat out anymore. The only time we go to eat out is if we go to like McDonald's or Wendy's and then I use the app to get like free stuff with the points. It's the only time we'll ever go out to eat and it's maybe a couple times a month. Oh, and by the way, like the fast food prices have gone up too it, tremendously. Uh, that in itself isn't even worth it. You might as well just go to a grocery store and buy, you know, ground meat, make your own burgers or, you know, buy, buy chicken nuggets and make them at home or something. Because like in some places, McDonald's was charging $6 for a hash brown and $18 for a Big Mac combo. What are you with $18? You could buy chicken breast that could feed an entire family something healthy for dinner. Like, you're better off just not even doing that. Maybe. The next thing we actually had to give up was I had to stop working. I actually went back to work in July and I worked for almost six weeks. I was only working part time because my husband's in the military and we share a car, and then we also can't afford childcare. Yeah, that's the other thing. Child care is so expensive that she was saying, and I think what she was trying to explain is that it actually, when she tried to go back to work, it costs so much for child care now that that would be where all of her money went anyway. So what's the point of them doing that? So she might as well just stay home and raise them, but now they're one income and they're sharing a vehicle. I was only working weekends and most of the time I'd work 24 hours. Sometimes I get lucky and be able to work 28. But because I went back to work, we ended up losing our WIC benefits and the food bank that we used to go to because it was income based. We would only go to that food bank a couple times a month, but this is the other thing. They put the squeeze on people like this who obviously really are not uh, doing well financially. Like to for them to be, they're paying into these benefit systems like for food stamps and Medicaid, Medicare, whatever, our money goes into that. They take our taxes out. They tax us to death, by the way. Everybody is being taxed 40 to... 40% to 60%, I'd say. For every $10 you make, four of that goes to the government for taxes. And again, for what? And so you're funding these programs, these entitlement programs. She should qualify for those. Her family is obviously not making enough money to support themselves, but just because her going to work set them just over a th uh, arbitrary threshold, they now no longer qualify for benefits that are being given to people who are not citizens who are coming here illegally. That still helped us out a lot because they would usually give us- And this is a military family. A large amount of food that would probably add up to like $150 in groceries. Getting that twice a month really helped us. But when I went back to work, we lost that and our WIC benefits and our WIC benefits also really helped us. And then I wasn't able to work more hours to make up for what we had lost. Honestly, with how much money I was bringing in, it wasn't really covering entirely what we lost anyway. But at that point, yeah. there was- so she's saying it actually benefits them more for her not to work so they can still get some of these benefits that everybody is paying into and they're not much a couple hundred dollars for groceries no point in me working i ended up having to quit my job and luckily we were able to get our WIC benefits back like the week after but the food bank you have to wait like a whole month and then reapply next thing we had to give up was me and my husband had to give up getting any new clothes of any type now anybody who has ever been postpartum you know that within the first year Yay! of being postpartum your body changes a lot i'm still wearing the clothes that i wore when i was pregnant because i can't afford to buy new ones and not only that but even though i stopped breastfeeding my daughter when she was like three months old i'm still wearing my breastfeeding bras because i actually cannot afford to buy more and anybody who has to buy bras y'all know how expensive that is so again, these are not people who are just entitled and living beyond their means that just need to stop drinking Starbucks and cut their Netflix subscriptions. She is talking about all the things that they've cut back and all of the ways where they're not, you know, living like 
uh, be above and beyond their means. They're actually living very frugally, and even then, they cannot afford to survive. Especially for people who are big chested like me, like I'm an F cup. So just to get like a good supportive bra that's actually gonna last a long time, starting price literally is like $55. So yeah, True. we genuinely cannot afford that. Next thing we had to cut out was actually going to the movies. Honestly, we didn't really go that often anyway. We went like, we used to go like maybe once every three or four months, but now we haven't been to the movies in a year. Yeah, again, all of that stuff is just way overpriced. She mentions to the snacks and stuff there, way expensive, even if you bring your own. And honestly, it's because not only are the snacks extremely overpriced, but it's just not worth it anymore, especially when you could just get the movies free at home with like the free apps like Freebie and Plex on your TV. So the next thing we had to give up was weekend trips. Usually once a month, we would take our kids to like Raleigh or we would go to like Emerald Isle. If you live in North Carolina, you know where those places are. We would do that just to get the kids out of the house, do some new experiences. We would maybe like go to like a petting zoo or we'd go to like the Raleigh mall, you know, just do like fun stuff. And now we can't afford that anymore. With gas being 3.50 a gallon, we can't afford the two hour drive to Raleigh. The next thing we had to give up was um, far away doctor's appointments. Yeah, and this is another thing, like, uh, you know, people always say, oh, there's free activities and things that you can do that don't cost money, blah, 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 that, that you know, that they claim you can do with your kids and stuff. Okay, like she's saying, it costs gas, you're, you're taking time out of your day, then people want, you know, kids are going to want food, they're going to get thirsty, they're going to want this and that. So these free activities end up costing money anyways. So let me go ahead and give like a short explanation of this. Where I live in North Carolina isn't rural, but it's not a big area. Basically, if the military base wasn't here, this town wouldn't really exist. 99% of the jobs that are here are related to the military. <laughs> That's just insane to me. So she's saying that if they want to go to a doctor, like in many cases, they have to drive 50 minutes out of the way to go. Now, not everybody lives in rural areas, but I am hearing, and I'd be interested to know what you guys think and what your experiences are. Let me know in the comments. I'm hearing that they're shutting down hospitals in rural areas because they just can't even afford to, to keep going anymore. And um, our government, which can send billions of dollars to Ukraine and Israel won't even spend the money to keep these hospitals running, which again is just insane to me. I don't want to live here anymore. I live in America and the sense of dread that I feel living. And then this is another thing these young people are saying and what they're doing. They're leaving America. In many cases, they're moving to Mexico. They're moving to Spain. They're moving to places that are more affordable because it's just it, it's too expensive here. And that to me is kind of crazy. Um, let's see. If you just graduated college and you're working in entry. So this guy I disagree with, but I wanted to play his video and we'll end it here. Level job and you can't afford to pay your bills. Let's have a chat. It's time to quit. I think anybody would- That's horrible advice to give people, especially right now. If you have a job and you just don't like it, don't quit if you don't have something lined up. With a little bit of work ethic these days can make at least five to ten thousand dollars a month this is completely untrue he's literally lying because he's probably trying to sell you a course with their phone let's be honest with their phone oh okay if everybody could make five to ten thousand dollars a month with just their phone we wouldn't be experiencing this cost of living crisis that we're experiencing so why do you, why do these people lie? Your minor in English is worth nothing and you need to start building some real skills. If you love your job and you love your career path, this isn't for you. But if you've ever even You need to start building some real skills. This is the kind of nonsense they'll say to people who are plumbers, people who have skills and stuff that are struggling financially or that own their own business. Like they, it's so ridiculous and thought about starting your own business and it's so out of touch or working as a freelancer whatever start now no do not become a freelancer right now in this economy that is the worst thing you could do this is the worst advice ever because it's going to be way harder in a few years just i agree that it'll be harder in a few years to be a freelancer but it's certainly not a good thing now because everybody says you should stay at your job and that it's the safe thing to do 
does not mean you should stay there if you hate it. No, this is the other issue that a lot of people have to accept. You're not going to always do something that you love and are passionate about. You're not always going to work at a place that you love and enjoy. In some cases, you do have to put your time in, right? As they say, I had to work at law firms that I hated. I had to work for people who were mean and cruel and nasty. You know, I didn't just leave to freelance or something with no plan or whatever. This is nonsensical things to tell people. And I think, frankly, it's absurd. Even if this means moving back in with your parents? Oh, right. Step backwards in life so you could freelance and pursue a pipe dream. Again, very bad advice. Um, this video has gone on much longer than I anticipated, but it is something that I think is very important. And I want to start talking about now because I want to encourage people to start taking the steps they need to take now to be more prepared. Um, people who are living beyond their means should stop doing that now. <laughs> uh, but I want to encourage also the older generations to look at things maybe from a different perspective and to try to have more understanding towards maybe even their own kids and their perceived failure to become independent. It's a lot harder than it used to be. It is a different it's a different situation completely and not just here in America, but that's globally. Things are not the same as they were in the 70s and 80s, and we're never going back to that. Um, that America is gone. It's not here anymore. And so that's basically my thoughts on the Gen Z and cost of living crisis and the system being broken, but being broken by design, being designed to benefit a very few people. Look at the wealth inequality in, in this country, though, it's completely unsustainable. And a lot of these people that are um, experiencing like economic hardship right now, these are the people who support society, that keep everything going. These are the people working the jobs that keep society going. And so I'm not really sure what the strategy is here with the elites, what they're thinking. I guess they actually believe they can just import a new uh, work base for, and they don't care. And that's how they're looking at things. I would say though, that that's very foolish and naive on their part to think that that's going to work. Okay, that's it for now. I hope you guys have a good day.